Hi, I'm Jeremy. And I'm Brooke. And we are of Salt and Pepper Wine. Today we are at Pacero's. We are so excited to do this tasting today. We have actually been here. If you guys go watch our Roll Out the Barrel, you'll see a little snippet. But um, after that, we were just so in love with their wine, so we decided to come back and do a full tasting. A lot of their stuff is estate grown. Mm -hmm. uh, none of their wines are actually from California. None of their grapes and anything else along those lines is from California. Mm -hmm. So this is a true Texas wine. Yes, yes. So our first tasting is the Viognier. It is an estate uh, Viognier. So remember in our last videos, you guys hear me talk about how much I love estate wine. Grapes made from estate grapes. Or wine made from estate grapes. Mmm, mm, it's beautiful. Look at that. What do you smell? Oh, lavender. I get a little peach. Yeah, yeah, definitely the peach and honey. A little bit of honey in there somewhere. Mm. It's very fragrant. Like we we are like really putting our nose into the glass so that we can get a good whiff, but. You can, you can actually have your you can actually yeah. have your nose outside of mm -hmm. it a little bit and it and, and you'll still get a very good a very good smell on it. Oh yeah. Very good. Oh yeah. Very good. Very well done. It's very very, very fruit forward. Um, and but I, it's not sugar. That's it's not like it's not like sweet that hits you. It's, it, it's no. It's very, got a little well sweet done. to it. But, but it's, it's not, not it's not off balance. Yeah. No. Not at all. Not at all. And so. I'm trying to get away from where I say, oh, I don't like white, I don't like rosé. We've come to realize I don't like. Over over the course of the last <laughs> few videos, you've probably seen us switch the lane, which we've. Exactly, we've exactly. So I like good wine, and this is actually a very good white wine. It's, it's heavy. Yeah, absolutely. And they were telling us that with this Viognier, you've got a lot of people who are just, I love my my reds. They actually love this. And I can see why. It's got that kind of body of a red, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, 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 definitely. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. And also on top of it, it, it's, it changes. It, it, as soon as you swirl it around a little mm -hmm. bit, give it a little more oxygen, it definitely changes. The complexity definitely moves. Ooh, I can see that. Yeah. Mm, this is a good one. I'm you're, really like it, like now you're starting to smell a little bit more of the lemon, the citrus side of it. Oh, I wouldn't quite say lime. It's not quite a lime yet, but it's, no. it's definitely a no. lemon. No, I agree or maybe with it's because I'm looking at your shirt. I know my bright yellow. Um, you know, Viognier is Texas's answer to Chardonnay. Yep. If that kind of makes sense. Um, very few. In the past, a very few um, wineries were able to make a really good Texas Chardonnay. And they found out that actually uh, Viognier grows really good here in Texas. Um, and so that's kind of been the answer. And yet, I don't like everybody's Viognier. I really don't. And this one is a really good one. It's heavy bodied. Um, it's got a little bit of sweet to it, but it's not. It's not overbearing. No, not at all. Um, it's got a lot of fruit forward. I don't know. Yeah, do well, that's, no, Good job, Seth. And now we are on to our next tasting. <sighs> this is the <clears throat> Fiora Seco. Ooh. So this is made from grapes from the High Plains. And as you guys know, about 80 to 90% of all Texas grapes come from the High Plains. So I'm not sure what vineyard it is, but it comes up from the greatest place in Texas where all the grapes are <laughs> like, grown. Yeah. Uh, you know what? That orange. Oh my God. That orange, that orange hits you. That is crazy. No. I don't really think I've ever gotten yeah. orange. It's like a, well, it's a orange mascot, which is typically done. Oh, is it? <clears throat> yeah, well, oh. it's typically done a lot, a lot sweeter. Not and so sense. now what what Seth has actually done is went after the dry portions of it, which is, is a lot harder to do when you have a bunch of sugar in it. Y'all. And I am <laughs> what it tastes so like a lot of you, a lot of you for a lot of you first time wine drinkers and stuff like that where you like a lot of the 
uh, the, the sweeter stuff, you'll find this an excellent segue between the sweet stuff and the dry stuff. And that's really where this, where I see this. If you're not dry yet, if you're like in like the first nine months doing of drinking, that, yeah, yeah. And now you started to go a, from yeah. the, the sweet stuff on yeah. the left, or your right, all to the, the way, yeah, to the no, dry I stuff, but you're not at a Tanat yet, you're not at a, yeah, <clears throat> at an Alianico, you're not, a, I mean, you're not even in this, Tempranillo country yet. This You'll is like good. This, You'll this like is this. definitely, you guys will hear me say pool wine, because I'm always thinking about, like, where am I going to drink this wine at? And this is one of those amazing sit out on the patio, sit on the porch, definitely. sit by the pool. Definitely. Um, I am not as, I don't, um, I, I don't particularly go for sweet wines. Um, but this just has a little bit of sweet, got that strong um, orange taste yep. to it. Um, it's it's heavy. That's the best way I can explain it. Uh, well, maybe medium body, medium body, medium to heavy body. Um, it's got a long finish on it. So good. <sighs> wow. I didn't know that orange muscat. That was the grape on it. No. It's really good. So on that wine that we just had, the orange muscat, you know what? I've been sitting here um, while Todd went and got our next tasting, and you get hints yeah, of ginger. Ginger, uh, when, you, when it lets you sit, when yeah. you let it sit on your tongue a little bit, that ginger. It's so cool. So you know how ginger kind of leaves that tingle on your tongue? That's what it does. Um, this That was a great bottle. That was really good. So. We're moving on to the next one. What do you think it is? Uh, dry rosé. It's a rosé. Texas and their rosés. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's it's mainly a Mavedra and a Grenache. Okay. okay. So that, that, that makes up about, I don't know, about 65, 60 to 65%. Got it. It's a really light rosé. Yeah. And it's, it's not, not heavy it, at all. But it's dry. It's, but it's dry, yeah. It's that's dry. that's the thing. Most most people when they have <clears throat> when when they have a rosé, they think sweet, they think, think sugar, they mm -hmm. think a lot of the stuff that you know, a, a lot of those kind of notes. What I am starting to really real, what I am really starting to like about Texas rosés is they're really getting really good uh, the, the dry rosés. Yes, I totally agree. Because when I when I first started hearing about rosé, I thought. Sweet, and I'm yeah. like, nope, I don't Dessert want to do with it. I don't want rosé. No, thank you. Um, but but now that I'm starting to taste these dry rosés, okay, okay, yeah. I Texas, you're, you're you're doing it. You're doing it. So what are, what what notes are you getting? A lot of like like watermelon slash strawberry. Ooh. is is definitely. Very, it's very fruity, which is which is interesting. It smells so fruity, but when you taste it, it's really yeah, light. Yeah, it's, it's really light. Yeah. <sighs> so this is the Malbec. Whoa, that tobacco hits you. Yeah. It's it's a it's a tobacco smell without the leather. Like most of the time, when I when when you when you start smelling tobacco. Your your smell. You also get a, that that hint of the leather in there too, and and this is this is just straight tobacco without. Okay, without the now leather. I'm excited to taste it. Okay, maybe a little nervous. No, again, Pesero, excellent job on the fruit forwardness, not hiding behind anything, just letting the. <laughs> Y'all, Y'all, I, I I wish I was exa exaggerating. This is so good. This is the way to do it. This is the way to do it. If I would have started off on this kind of mall bag, I would have been started drinking wine a long time ago. <laughs> but the the um, the scent tricks you. So you smell that tobacco. You're like, oh goodness, I'm about to get hit with a freaking, with oak. Yeah, I'm about to get hit with all I'm, this. I'm, oak. I'm about to lick. I'm about to lick a, a, a toothpick. Yeah, that's, that's really what it is. Exactly. Meant. Exactly. You got that like strawberry kind of, you got that, mm. that strawberry note in there. The one thing that I don't it's, see on that is you don't see the mocha on the end of it, which mm. I agree it's, with more that. Of a, it's more of a fruit than a, than a mocha finish. And it's not, it doesn't have a long finish. It's not a long finish, but it's a good, I mean, it's good for sipping. I like it, but I like fruit forward. Oh, wait. 
If you put more oxygen on it, you get that mocha. I'm getting fruit. Lots of fruit. Lots of fruit. You get that hint of mocha. Mmm. But it, it's a lot, a lot of fruit. Man, wow. So the, the scent, it doesn't match the taste. And y'all, the taste is so good. It's just so fruit forward. So like not hiding behind anything. Uh, Pacero Seth is letting you see what Texas fruit can do. There's no no hiding, no, which I, I love that. And that's one thing we want to impart to you that there are a lot of Texas winemakers who are, who are saying, you know what, let me show you what we are made of. Um, I know probably 10 years ago, Texas wine wasn't that good, but y'all wow. today, this right here, I will drink this over um, almost an Argentinian. Yeah. Um, Malbec. Malbec. Definitely. Definitely. So. Seth, way to go. Yeah, that, that is genuine. By the way, everyone, just so you know, we aren't getting paid to say this by, no. by Pacero. No, we're actually, not. This is this is us, and yeah. we want to give you guys. We're actually paying to yeah, do this. Yeah, we're actually we actually pay to do this. Yeah. And the reason why we pay to do this is so that if something is a crappy wine, yeah. guess what? We're not going to give you a line of shit. That's it. Mm -hmm. Good, Good point. Tasting. Good point. This is the Rackers blend. And this actually is a wine that came out out of an absolute accident. And what I mean by an absolute accident, I mean what they did was they took all of the red grapes and all of the, <clears throat> all the wine and uh, what they did was they put it in a trough and they said, uh, let's wait for the sediment to settle and let's just make wine out of that. And what their whole thought process was just to give it to the you know, field hands and and uh, the workers out in the vineyard to say, hey, here's some wine, and it's a reflection of what this year did. And um, what <laughs> happened there was that, you know, we were just gonna give it away for free uh, to the guys out there as kind of their Christmas bonus, if you will. And so what happened there was a couple of the guys said, hey, wait a minute here, let's uh, let's go ahead and try this before we go, before we, <laughs> before we uh, go uh -huh. out and do it. And uh, all of a sudden they said, wow, this is a really good blend. And uh, now they make it on purpose. <laughs> so. Really? So it's every single red bridal that they grow here on their property. So my favorite, the steak grapes. It's got I that buttery it. finish to it. It's got, it, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, but a little more butter. American oak. Okay. It's very so... Um, I can smell um, tobacco in this. It's another one of those really kind of strong tobacco smell. Although I'm getting a little fruit in there mixed with that tobacco. No. It's got sediment in it. You guys can't see. Well, maybe, maybe a little bit more. But it's got sediment mm. in it. it smells delicious. Mmm. Mmm. So you know what this reminds me of? Um, this reminds me of Cabernet Sauvignon. Yeah. That's Agreed. what this reminds yeah. me of. Um, and I don't think there's Cabernet, Cabernet grapes in here, are there? I, they, they, didn't, uh, they didn't say anything. This one, they were, this one is, is primarily Tempranillo. Oh. Yeah, and, and, and Elianico, sorry, and Elianico as well. Oh. Holy yeah. moly. Wow. So. Very complex wine. It is. It Very is. Complex. It really is. And so this is something that I would drink with a with a steak. Definitely. Um, that's what I get with this. Just like kind of like a heavy meal. Um, I would drink the Rackers blend. It's so good. Yeah. De definitely something that's more lean on the steak. You don't want to have. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, because it, it would overpower a marbled steak very, very easily. I can see that. Um, but it's a, it's it's got heavy oak. But, but let me stop you there. It do, it does have heavy oak. Not. But yes, exactly. You can still taste the fruit in this. It's not. Um, Sarah's is not hiding behind the oak. It's 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 heavily oaked, but not so much so that you're just like I can't do it. I can't drink this um, because the tannins are knocking you over the face. Um, 
This is really good. I like it. And I'm not a big, huge yeah, oak so person. Get a little bit more. This is good. You see uh, that? Yeah, you can't, you can't really see it. No, sorry. Sorry, you guys. What, um, what taste are you getting? I don't know. You can get a little bit more uh, sediment in there. You can see the sediment. You see a little bit? Oh, well, yeah, you can see the sediment. What did you, well, obviously you enjoy that. What did you taste of? As he drank the whole tasting. Cinnamon, definitely a, a. You got some cinnamon? Yeah, a little bit of cinnamon. I can, I can do that. Um, on the tongue? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What fruit, what fruits are you getting? Or did you get? Goodness. <laughs> what fruits did you taste? Uh, uh, obviously, it's all of their red wines. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna get the strawberry, you're gonna get the watermelon, you're gonna get a lot of the fruit forwardness. It got of their a little other bit cherry. It's still yeah, a little bit cherry in dark, it. Fr darker for red fruit. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's not like a black cherry where it's just in your mouth. No, no, and, no. no. Uh, That's not what I get at all. Yeah, it's not It's not burrowing. It, it, the, 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 the fruit isn't burrowing itself into your mouth and sticking around for yeah. 20 minutes. And so I can see why this is a popular one. I just because it is heavy bodied. Um, the, oh, it's not over oaky. It's delicious. Still tastes the fruit. Um, complex. And I like the Rector's blend. You can see, you you can see, a, little you see a little bit of the sediment in there. A little bit. Okay. We are on to our next tasting, the Syrah. Now, the last time we were here, I fell in love with the Petite Syrah that was in the barrel. So, um, I know Petite Syrah and Syrah are not the same thing, no. um, but I'm really excited to taste it. What is that smell? I don't know what that is. Like black pepper almost. Y'all, I have not really got that pepper smell before. It's pepper very and, strong. Pepper and, pepper and leather. Man. Pepper. I'm, I'm not really smell the wine that is that peppery. Like, but it also good. has like a, like a plum kind of smell to it as well. That pepper shocked me because that, that's not even what I was thinking about. Man. Well, now I'm excited to taste it because that's a, I was shocked. Yep, you can taste the pepper. Taste See the that pepper. pepper is very strong in the um, smell. Wow. Um, and the aroma, you taste it, it's Man. very peppery. Um, that's a new one for me. I know people say pepper, wow. and I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh, um, but I actually did get the pepper out of it. This is what it looks like. Wow, that pepper. That pepper knocked me over the face. So are you getting some fruit in there? Because I'm having a hard time getting past this pepper. Maybe your palate's a little different. Well, it is. His palate is different. Smoke. Definitely smoke. Okay. Smoky taste. That pepper. It's very different for me. It yeah. is a, it's a different yeah. experience for me. Um, more, of a black, more of a black cherry than... than Okay. Anything else? Wow. But that pepper, that is a. Ooh. But it's so good. Like, I it. think once you get past that initial, ooh, there's that pepper, um, and wow. let it open up, and you get to the fruit, it is really good. Like all of Seth's wines here at Pacero's, he doesn't hide behind anything. I mean, he really shows you. Um, the capability of the fruit. Exactly, Absolutely. exactly. Um, and wow. so if you do get that fruit after you, after you get past that pepper, and I think it was such a shock to me because I'm not used to getting that heavy pepper. People will be like, oh, I'm getting pepper. I'm like, okay, but I'm getting pepper, um, and it's really good. So all of their wines here were delicious. 
they were so fruit forward. Seth does an amazing job. He doesn't hide behind um, oak. He doesn't hide behind, I mean, nothing. He shows you what the fruit can do. And this is why Paceros may be one of my favorite here in Texas. Definitely. So thank you so much for um, coming along for the ride and for watching our YouTube channel. Please like, uh, share, and subscribe. And tell us what you